Question number one, Councillor Osborne. Osborne for his question. The answer, particularly the tables are in relation to the part A of the um, question. Um, I think one point I'd like to draw to this Council's attention is in, in really in relation to the to contrast between today the Chancellor's uh, announcement regarding the Northern Line extension and a billion pounds worth of loan guarantee to speed up investment in Nine Elms, uh, generating enormous number of jobs and homes and bringing this borough into limelight in central London. To the Chancellor's statement this morning, if at the end of his answer where the uh, leader says he's determined to protect residents from a Labour government that no longer is in power. Perhaps he can answer a more pertinent question then. What is the council doing to protect residents from the spectacular failure of his Chancellor's economic plan, borrowing up by 212 billion more than planned, growth down by 0.1%, as we have seen today in the statement to which he referred? Osborne is a good Chancellor. What he doesn't have is a good job to deal with. May be because he has inherited an enormous mess and as day, days goes by the scale of the mess carries on and on and on and no wonder that the poor man has the problems that he's inherited and a task that is almost unfulfillable. Under the requisite standing order to the Leader of the Council from Councillor Nadler, the Northern Line Extension. Well, Councillor Nadler, very... could you now ask your question, please? Uh, I will do, and thank you very much, Mr Mayor, but I feel that my, the answer that I sought has somewhat been preempted already by the Leader, but I shall repeat the question. Will the Leader join me in welcoming the Chancellor's announcement earlier today of support for the Northern Line Extension, which will ensure that the Council's long-held aim of bringing the tube to Battersea will go ahead? Yeah. I'm very grateful to Councillor Nadler for that question and quite rightly that she should ask because she represents Queenstown Ward which in years to come will be entirely different. What this chamber needs to note is that this council has sought redevelopment and regeneration in nine ounces of many, many years, long before some of the new era vistas, including the GLA, came on the scene. It was back in 2004 that this council initiated a study, a uh, review of the industrial employment land, which led to the review of planning policies in that area and the start of mixed-use type of developments uh, proposed for the area. And that is what has unlocked the re re regeneration of Nine Elms, not across alone in Wands of the Lone, but across to, to Lambeth as well. And as I said earlier, 16,000 new jobs, 20, uh, jobs 20, 25,000 new jobs and 16,000 new homes. But not only that, they, it will mean that we will have an extraordinarily good new quarter for this borough and one that will add to growth in London and growth in the country. We now to Osborne. Thank Councillor Osborne for his um, question. The answer is as stated. But you know, one thing that we need to really bear in mind here is that this council and this side, we believe in actually giving people choice in the way in which they provide for themselves. And that is what the proposal on Meals on Wheels do, will do. Right to the heart of my question. If it's all about choice, can I just get something straight then? Is it the case that if this change to the Meals and Wheels service were to produce absolutely no savings whatsoever, we would still be pursuing it because we want to drive forward what is known as the personalisation agenda. Is that correct? In going for the personalisation agenda, this government is not alone in pressing for the personalisation agenda because the personalisation agenda predates this government. It is perceived by many in both the care community and, and, and in the voluntary sector to be a good thing. We able-bodied and hale and hearty people have choice in the way in which we provide ourselves. I do not see why the people who are less able should not be encouraged to have choice, be helped to have that choice, and why they should not live independent lives without somebody saying one size fits all and take it or leave it.
is absolutely right. I mean, I just share with, with colleagues, uh, I am uh, an occasional carer for my father who used to it for a short period of time have a Meals on Wheels service for himself. The reason why he stopped having it was because by the time he got to the door, the person had gone and the meal was left on the steps, three steps below, and he had to then struggle out to get to those three steps, and he felt that it just wasn't worth it. Now, what I think is right is that people should have a, the kind of service that they think works best for them, and if it means a little bit of extra use of their personalized budget, then so be it. Uh, question, and I think, um, as I said earlier, on this side, we believe in choice. We believe in letting people decide for themselves. And I know that he has engaged in this debate elsewhere and made precisely that point, that choice is what people want and choice is what people should have. The leader agree with me, firstly, that uh, state-owned monopolies very rarely provide anything like the value for money that one gets in a marketplace where people have a choice not only for what they do, uh, but more importantly, what they choose not to do. Uh, but would you further agree with me that uh, the move we have at the moment, away from treating our... Is, it's entirely to be welcomed that this is being replaced by an approach where we treat our older people as partners alongside the council and other public services in the quality of their own lives, giving them that level of choice that uh, I believe that we, we uh, simply can't afford to ignore, either from a financial point of view or indeed from a human point of view. Question, supplementary question. I mean, he's so right that this is what is it all about. As people, different generations come to the age when they might need care, they who have been used to a lot more independent living than the previous generations will want slightly different standards than, than, than their forefathers or uh, uh, parents have had. And it is quite right that we should reach out to people and say that they should continue making the choices that they have previously made. They should continue to shop for most appropriate ways of uh, providing for their care. And this is a, a small, but a small and important step in that direction. Um, if we are providing more choice across the board, what do we do then for those people who say they don't have a carer, they don't have a microwave, they want it to, be, uh, to arrive hot and provided for them? Are we able to give them what they choose and ask for. Osborne uh, uh, probably hasn't uh, fully understood uh, the way in which the current service works. The meal arriving hot is sometimes a nervous statement and uh, it's not difficult, easy to provide it at, in, in the current uh, arrangements. I think what the Director of Social Services will certainly want to do and her staff will want to do is to ensure that people are fully informed on, of, of what they can do all avenues that hitherto they have never considered because they never have been allowed to make those decisions have it put in front of them. I think one thing is I am absolutely certain about is that when people have the full range of choices made known to them, people will exercise what suits them best. People will not settle for take it or leave it approach. Thank Councillor Boswell for her question and the answer is um, as, as given. One point I sort of uh, reflect on virtually every day as I come from my home to the town hall. There are two primary schools on my way and almost every child that I see going into school is accompanied by an adult, either a parent or a carer. This idea that parents don't actually look after their children or don't safely convey their children to schools is completely nonsense. People do take responsibility for conveying their children safely to school. They teach their children road savviness. And, and so this idea that without this kind of service, um, there will be mayhem on the roads and children will get uh, knocked down is completely untrue. Firstly, everyone on this side would like to send best wishes for a good recovery to John, the lollipop man who was knocked down whilst patrolling the crossing in Broomwood Road last week. This accident highlights the importance of sustaining, not cutting back, school crossing patrols. And if there's to be corporate sponsorship to replace some of the council funding for some of the lollipop men and women, it must be sustained and it cannot just be left to a sponsor's whim whether to continue funding or not. Can the leader confirm that sponsors will be required to give notice of any withdrawal of funding or non-renewal of sponsorship and how long will this period of notice be? 
the accident um, Councillor Boswell refers to unfortunate. But you know, in politics, it's one of those risks, isn't it? I don't think uh, you ever make a decision and everything goes well as it should do. And this was a kind of an incident that neither Councillor King nor I nor anyone on this side uh, would have wished on anyone. But I understand the facts to be slightly different. They, it, is, it is that that John would have been a victim of this accident because he happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I understand that he was on the pavement and the car actually uh, unrelated to, to, to his activities as a, as a lollipop person uh, careered over to the pavements and knocked him down. So it's, it's a slightly different uh, set of uh, facts and perhaps a different gloss. As for the issue of sponsorship, well, this is what I hope Councillor Boswell will do and her colleagues will do, uh, will want to thank the sponsors, uh, will want to welcome the sponsors. And of course, Councillor King will want to engage with the sponsors as early as possible as their 18-month period comes to an end uh, to, to, to seek renewal. But one thing that members will have also noticed over the last few months, uh, weeks certainly, is that virtually every primary school has a deal with a, a state agent advertising their Christmas fate and uh, Christmas uh, activities. And I'm sure there is an arrangement between each school, a sponsorship arrangement. And, and similar arrangements happen every summer as well. And I think the schools themselves have a role to play in attracting sponsorship. After all, they're doing it. It is not that they're not doing it, but uh, they, maybe they want to do it for enhancing the safety of their children if that's what they're very worried about. First, uh, uh, Councillor Maxwell Scott, could I just please issue a plea? I did ask for the supplemental questions to be brief. Uh, would the leader, thank you, Mr. Mayor, sorry about that. Um, would the leader uh, share with me, uh, well, welcome the good news that I, I read about in the Sun about Talk Talk uh, uh, sponsoring five of our lollipop people. Uh, would he also welcome the news that, uh, although at very, very early stages, that today uh, the owners of more than car insurance indicated they would also like to sponsor some of our lollipop people? You don't try, you don't get. And, and Talk Talk sponsorship is an interesting way in which we have unlocked the goodwill out there towards something that people value and something that people see as an opportunity for both sharing their, their largesse with, with something that is considered socially desirable. The five to the leader. I'm very grateful to Councillor Nadler for this question because it's, uh, it's an absolutely important question for the aspiration agenda for the west of the borough because what we are doing at the ARC Academy is actually enhancing life chances of children who use that school and those who will in, in future generations use it. It is our absolute belief in providing good quality education but not only good quality teaching but good quality teaching in, in good quality buildings that has led us to take the step we have taken. I understand that today is the start of the first stage of uh, public consultation on some of the design work in the area and I hope the local people and local activists on both sides of the political divide will, will take part in it and, and, and embrace the change that's coming to the ARC Academy. And does the leader agree with me that the steady move towards academy status across the borough is a significant factor in pushing up standards ever higher in ones with schools? Hey. I, with a number of colleagues, was at the launch of the Putney Academy and uh, I was very, very impressed by the standards of the pupils at the school, the smartness, uh, the kind of spring in their step as they saw their school uh, going into a new world uh, of, of better opportunities. And of course, the chairman of ARC Academy, a former councillor in this chamber, uh, was embracing this change and, 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 and talking about exactly her wish that academy status for schools will bring new opportunities and she hoped that it would go to areas which are less uh, well provided with education. Patney uh, Elliott's site was exactly a place where people in need of good education, need in lift out of uh, kind of life that otherwise they have had, uh, is the place to go and I, I, I welcome all that. Councillor Carpenter. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> we welcome the fact that we were able to get reach uh, agreement across the uh, uh, chamber on the way forward for uh, our uh, Putney Academy. And we are now still in, at the beginning, uh, as you said, of the consultation period. That will result in uh, plans coming forward which will actually go to a solar tender and then leased. And uh, can uh, 
the leader assure us that we will get the best possible value for money out of that tender. The role he's played in this particular debate because he has uh, a slightly different position from us but he has been very constructive in making sure that uh, we came up with a decision which was more broadly uh, welcome and more broadly agreed. Um, so thank you uh, Councillor Carpenter for making that possible. And of course you are right that we should seek uh, value for money from, uh, from the tender. And so it reminds me of, of, of a line in one of those television sitcoms. I didn't get to where I got to by not uh, getting value for money. This council has an en unenviable record of several decades of getting value for money and this contract will not be an exception. This um, question and uh, the answer is as it is. He somewhat missed the point here. Um, we're not suggesting that, that uh, it's up to us to publish these statistics. You are the local authority. You are running this local authority. Uh, and if you want to be truly open and transparent, it is up to you to publish these statistics. And you accuse us of cherry picking. But of course, we think that you've missed some of the key top line indicators that are important to residents here. Uh, and it doesn't take an awful lot to find some of the things we've suggested, such as social rent. So uh, you've made a generous offer in here. Uh, the, Additional measures will be published if we can find those data sources for you. Um, I, I've already found a couple of them uh, just in the half an hour before this meeting. So when I send you an email over the next week uh, where you can find regularly annually updated housing social rent levels for London, uh, is it, can I have your reassurance on the record on the council that you will be publishing those and other indicators where we can find you reliable data sources? I thank Councillor Daly for his supplementary. I hope his data sources are as rigorous as the ones he uses in his day job uh, because if they are as rigorous as that, those he uses in his day job, I am sure we would want to look at it. But let me, let me just make two points about, about uh, rent levels and leasehold charges. This council has never hidden the fact that our rent levels are higher. We have never shied away from saying that and accepting that. So if, if his aim is to say that uh, we will share on the top line indicators that ones of the rents are high, well, so be it. I don't think uh, uh, my colleagues or I have ever wanted to say that otherwise. But what we have said and very clearly said is that for that rent level, what do our tenants get? Our tenants get a damn sight better service in housing management and so on than their comparable tenants in other boroughs. That is our record and that is the record on which I'm perfectly happy to be tested. The, um, as the leader will know, the, uh, the uh, council conducts a, a regular survey of residents to see what their top concerns are. Um, Councillor Daly was saying that uh, leaseholder charges and social rents are significantly high up on the residents' priorities list. Does the leader recall ever seeing those things on the list of pri residents' priorities? Uh, a very difficult question because uh, much as one may search through resident satisfaction surveys, uh, this doesn't appear on it uh, and, and probably never will. Uh, the time for questions to the leader is now, I'm afraid, over.